abracadabra. It's not a magic word, it's a biblical word. Okay, just bring my board, my pen. So, it is very important that you need to understand when we talk about things, some things are revelations. In, um, now, you re still remember I said, what is the meaning of this word? Abra? Huh? Hmm? Okay? It means I will create. Okay? It's in the Aramic, Hebrew. And it says Kadabra, it means as I speak. Okay? As I speak. And according to Jewish history, they believe that in Genesis chapter 1, uh, when God created, he say, when God says, let there be light, and there was light, it's this word they use. So the belief is, they say, when God created, he said, Abba, abracadabra. So, now, this is not a, this word, they stole it, the devil stole it. Because this is a powerful word, and we are talking about, you create your world, you create things by what you speak. You create as you speak. As you speak, you are creating. So the Bible says, God says, let there be light, and there was light. And light is coming to your life. So there was darkness, but God said, let there be light, and there was light. So you need to speak in your darkness. You need to declare and decree. And when you declare and decree, then things are going to happen in your life. Oh, yes. Then things are going to move in your life. Oh, yes. If you believe something needs to happen, you need to say it. You need to believe and declare it and say, this is what's going to happen in my life. God is going to do this. And when you declare it, then it's going to happen in your life. Then oh, you yes. will know God is a God of his word. Okay? Now, the other thing I want to talk about is asking questions. Asking questions. That's my topic today. Asking questions. Now, you will see in the word of God, God was a master in asking questions. Because we cannot go with abracadabra if you don't ask questions. God asked the prophet, he asked him in Ezekiel 37, can these bones live again? Can these bones come to life? And he said, you said it, Lord. And God says to the prophet, prophesy. And he prophesied. And you know what happened? Miracles are happening. So you will see. And also God came to, to the prophet Jeremiah and asked him, what do you see? What do you see? So God always asks questions. Before a miracle happens, there must be questions. Can these bones come to life again? Now Jesus comes and he asks his disciples, who do the people say I am? Who do you say I am? So the first question you need to ask yourself when you talk about Abba is where am I? Where am I? Where am I in life? Where are you? Your finances. Where's your finances? Where are you? Because if you don't know where you are, how do you know where you are going? So God asks questions. He says, can these bones come to life again? Can this miracle happen? Jesus says, listen here, who do the people say I am? Because if you have a revelation, if you answer the questions, then you can expect a miracle. So if you don't ask yourself where I am, don't just go through life because you need to go through life. You need to ask yourself, where am I? Where's my finances? The second question you need to ask yourself, where do I want to be or go? What do you want in life? What do you want? What's the miracle you want to see happen in your life? Because if you don't know where you are going or what you want to see the outcome of your life, you could call it the outcome. Outcome of life. If you don't know what is the outcome of your life, then it means how would you know how to get there? How would can you trust God for a miracle if you don't know what you want? 
Don't just say, God, give me money. How much? Don't just say, God, give me a house. What type of house? God, give me a promotion. What? Because when the miracle happens, how do you know it's a miracle from God? Are you worthy, people? And I'm here to tell you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the devil has no control over your future. Oh, yes. He has no control over your life. Oh, Let yes. me tell you, the Lord says your life is going to work out. Things are going to happen. I receive now, the Bible it. says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the plans, the thoughts I have for you is to bless you, to give a hope and a future. Isn't that so? So the Lord says, I have a plan and a future for you. It means God says there is an outcome for you in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. How many of you believe that God has a blessed future for you? Or how many of you just go through life and hope something is going to happen? So you need to ask yourself, what is the type of outcome I want? What is the thing that God has for me? Where do I want to be? And then the third question you need to ask yourself, how do I get there? How do I get there? How do you get there? So, because if you ask these three questions, then you will know how to create by when, you, when you speak, as you speak. What, what you speak, what you declare is very important. You declare the outcome, not how you feel, where you are. What is the thing you want to see in your life? Imagine you somebody here. So you must understand that God created we as human beings very unique. The gift that God gave us, God gave us the gift of a will. You can decide what clothes to put on, isn't that so? You can decide what you want to eat, isn't that so? You can decide where you want to go. Are you with me? So your decisions, your decisions determine your outcome. Write it down. What I decide today will determine what will be the outcome of my life. Not the devil. We give too much power to the devil over our lives. Oh, the devil, it's the devil. No, you can change it. Because the devil cannot override your will. No. You surrender your will over to the devil. Are you with me? So it means where you are in life, you don't need to get stuck there. You can change it. So the will that God has given you can change your financial situation in a moment. And I see some of these financial, financial situations changing now. The decision you make now at this moment, tomorrow will determine how much you have in your bank account. I don't want to speak to somebody here. So you must understand, sometimes we just give our, our future over to faith. We say, okay, whatever must happen, it's going to happen because I'm a child of God. God is going to work out something for me. But God asks you, what do you want? When Peter, come, when Jesus came to some of the people who were sick, he asked them, God knew this man is blind. He asked them, what do you want me to do for you? God knows your problem. He knows where you are. He knows what you want, but he's asking you. Are you with me, people? So you need to understand, God asks questions. You need to ask yourself, where am I? Am I happy? Don't just say, ah, it's in the family. I've been here 10 years, so I accept it. Don't accept anything. Don't accept any circumstance. Say, this thing must change. And when you decide it's changing, I'm telling you it's going to change. Then the next thing you go to, why we cannot believe we create by when we, as we speak, is because we've been conditioned in our mind that this thing cannot change. But one thing I've learned in the word of God, with God, all things are possible. I say, with God, all things are possible. What's impossible for you, with God on your side, it is possible. And I see, Pastor Kalaba, I don't want to speak to somebody here. So Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you that I can see? 
Are you with me? That I can see. So what is the thing? You must identify your problem. And number two, you must identify your solution. Write it down. If you cannot identify your problem, how can you identify your solution? Because your solution is waiting for you. But it will not just come to you. You must see it. You must believe it. And after you say you see your solution, then you go to abracadabra. Are you with me, people? Can these bones come to life? Ezekiel 37, go read it there. He asked, can, can, can the miracle happen? Can, 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 can my husband change? Can my child change? It may take one month. It can may take two months. It can take two years. But you keep on sticking to what you believe. You say, Lord, I believe this bones can come. To I, I must bring you somebody here. You don't give up. Are you with me? When I realize as a man of God that my provision is not with men, my provision is with God, I've, everything changes around me. Because your solution is not in a person, it's in God. If you look for two people to be your solution, you will always be disappointed. How many of you know people always disappoint you? It's always the people you don't believe in, that you believe of you trust the most who disappoint you. Isn't it so? So men can disappoint you, I can disappoint you, but God can never disappoint you. I say, God can never disappoint you. That is why you can trust the word of God. Because it's, when God said it, it is done. I say, when God says it, it is done. So Ezekiel 37, verse 1, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of dry bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. Behold, there were many they were dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? God asked you, can this problem you are in, can it change? How many of you always ask yourself, you, I wonder will, when will my, my story change? How many of you ask yourself? And you think it is you asking, but it's actually God asking you. You see, you, when my finances get better, when will I get a promotion? Will I ever, do, will this thing happen? You think it's your mind, but it's God asking you. And what is your answer? You say, uh, uh, it looks impossible. Okay, God knows whenever. No. You don't accept it. The moment you identify the problem, the moment you do it, then you say, God, and then God asks you, if God asks you, when will it change? You say, God, it's going to change. You need to speak in the, to the dry bones. Speak to your problem. And the Bible says, as you speak. Look at what the Bible says here. Look what the Bible says here. Verse 3. As he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Verse 4. Then he said to me, prophesy to those bones. What is prophesying? Prophesying is dealing with the future. It's speaking what is going to happen. So what is going to be the outcome of your life? You speak it. If people ask you, how are things going? Ah, oh, you know. You know now how things are going. You don't talk like that as a child of God. You declare, you prophesy. Say, I need to prophesy. I need to prophesy. I'm the prophet of my own destiny. I'm the prophet of my own destiny. He says, prophesy. And he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them. So you look at your problem and you speak to your problem. Oh, yes. So can you speak to your problem? Speak to my problem. Are you with me, people? You don't complain. You don't cry. You speak. He say, say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of these bones, God to these bones. Surely I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I shall not die, you shall live. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, what? As I was busy speaking. Oh, yes. As I was prophesying. 
Oh yes. Say as I'm prophesying. As I prophesy. There was a noise. There was a noise. And suddenly, say suddenly. Suddenly. You don't know as you are speaking, suddenly miracles are happening. Oh yes. The miracle is in your mouth. I receive it. Suddenly, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Verse 9, and he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And he said to me, prophesy. Thus says the Lord, come from the four corners of breath and into those bones. The stand says here, so I prophesy as he commanded me. And breath came into them and they live. Can you see that? As I was. When's the medical happen? When you see it? As you speak. As you cadabra, you create. So, God says, I've created you to my image. You can do what I can do. Oh, yes. God has created you to his image. And let me tell you, prosperity is your portion. When you look at your money and your finances, when you look at your purse, you say in the mighty name of Jesus, I've got money. Money is entering my bank account. Oh, yes. I have favor. People love me. At my workplace, my boss likes me. I get promotion. I work in divine promotion. I, are you with me? What are you doing? For your mind, it is stupid. Now, just think for uh, Ezekiel. When the Lord says prophesy, and he was saying, speaking to the dry bones, what did he mind, his mind say? The natural will always find the spiritual. Because the spiritual and the natural, they are not from the same world. The spiritual is from another dimension and the natural is from this world. So when you speak things of the spirit, your mind will always fight it. Have you noticed when you say, I am healed and you feel pain here, what's your mind saying? Huh? What is your mind saying? Your mind always speaks the reality. But your spirit must declare what is the outcome. When they say they're going to return, or they say you don't have a job anymore. Don't see how things are going bad, how things are going down in your life. You just say, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm getting a promotion. Oh, yes. You just lost your job. I you still know. Don't say, I've lost my job. I'm getting a promotion. I receive Because it. God is not going to promote you there where you lost your job. He's going to promote you in different areas. God knows where. I see somebody with a promotion here. I receive it. Your testimony in the season will be greater about, about promotion. I receive it. Are you with me, people? Don't talk what the other people are talking. Talk what you believe must be the outcome of your life. Say, I create the outcome. I create the outcome. What I have today, I must, uh, it's the words I spoke. What I don't have, what I don't have. It's words that I did not speak. It's the words that I did not speak. So there is something about speaking. Because wherever you go, you shall see favor, divine favor. I wherever you it. go, you shall see God opening up doors for you. I wherever they it. go, they say, Joseph, you are a foreigner. You don't qualify. You are, I'm telling you, Joseph, he prospered as a foreigner in a foreign country. He ended up in a palace. Don't say I'm a foreigner. It's xenophobia. They're against me. Ah, ah. If God can do it for Joseph. I say he's doing it for you. I receive it. I say he's doing it for you because God is bigger than any government. Oh, yes. God is bigger than any rules in any, any country. Are you with me, people? Oh, yes. Are you with me, people? Oh, yes. I'm also a foreigner. I'm from Namibia. I'm not South Africa. It's from South Africa. I was not born here. I'm from Namibia. And when I came here, I took that scripture of Genesis. I said, Lord, if you can do it for, 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 for Joseph, it's happening to Herbert Mulondo. Oh, yes. And my life has been moving. Because let me tell you, people can say the doors are closed. People can say it's impossible. I see God is releasing your papers. I receive you are getting it. your passport. You I are getting the stamp in Pretoria. Bam! I receive it. You've got a work state. I'm telling you. Oh, yes. I see a medical is happening to somebody's documents there in Pretoria. I receive it. 
I see it. I see somebody's getting their visa. I receive it. Somebody's getting their working permit. I receive it. I see it happening right now, right now. I receive I don't it. For, I don't know who it is, but the Lord says somebody's here. You've been trusting God for a working permit. It is happening now. Now. It's happening now. Oh, yes. This week is your week for a testimony. Oh, yes. I see it's a week of testimony. I receive it. Do- I see somebody's documents are being released. I receive You are it. waiting for some documents. It is happening. It is happening. It's happening. Oh, yes. Just stand. Just stand. Just stand.